Hey, everyone, welcome to the show. I am Sal. Jason Aaron's here, everybody. And we're going to be talking about Turtles and Batman and more. I'm excited. Jason, welcome to the show. How's it going? It's going good, man. How about you? I'm doing well. Happy to be here. Yeah. I'm really thrilled to hear that you'll be uh, resuming. Uh, you'll be taking over for the Turtles uh, in the coming months. Uh, I understand in uh, in June, we're going to get the alpha issue. And then the right. series rolls forward in July. Um, I wanted to know a lot about like your kind of personal history with the turtles, but uh, just off the top of my head, like how you feeling about, uh, about this, about this experience? Like, are you, are you excited? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, of course. Yeah. I mean, I'm very <laughs> excited. You know, it's been a, it's, it's been a cool uh, like year and a half for me really career wise, as I kind of transitioned away from Marvel. Not that I, you know, I'm still doing stuff for Marvel, but basically became a free agent and able to kind of take any phone call that, that came my way. And Turtles mm -hmm. was really not one of those things that was on my radar in terms of, of um, you know, thinking that was really an option. Uh, but once it kind of came along, I was, I was, you know, like, absolutely. You know, I, I feel like those have been kind of the best moments of my career for me is the things, you know, that sort of popped up out of the blue. And I realized, yes, this is the right time. You know, it's the 40th anniversary um, what better time to be launching a brand new Turtles book? Yeah, I, I completely agree. Uh, and with this <clears> relaunch, <throat> uh, we're going to get a number one. Uh, we saw um, previews for uh, the creative uh, groups that you're working with um, for the first four issues. You're going to be working with four different artists uh, to introduce the first four issues and kind of like introduce the audience, reintroduce the audience uh, to the to each individual turtle. Um how uh how how much fun was it working on like knowing like oh man the first four issues of my run are going to have completely different visual tones associated with them yeah that i mean that part you know was really put together by jamie rich you know the the main editor on the book um yeah kind of as we were going along i mean i knew i knew you, you know when we sort of figured out the grand plan for for my run i knew i wanted to start that way and kind of focus on the the four brothers, as we, we pick up with them, you know, they're each in, in kind of very different circumstances, very different um, surprising situations for some of them uh, when we pick up with them. As a bit of, bit of time has passed between the new series and the end of, end of the, the previous volume of, of Sophie's run. So uh, we sort of catch up with the guys and see you know what exactly what they've gotten themselves into and it made perfect sense to to use different artists for each of those and the fact that you know jamie and idw were able to line up such a a murderer's row of of artists was was really really exciting yeah no i know you were looking at people like rafi albuquerque joel jones oh uh, man uh cliff chang cliff chong uh who's great uh, and Chris Burnham, uh, which I'm, right. I'm, I'm, there's no one I'm like, oh man, I'm really like that one. I'm really, no, they're all like all those names, all those issues. I'm like, and it, and it manages to isolate each turtle in kind of a fun, unique way where I'm like, I can't wait to see how that presentation goes. Um, and we're getting an alpha issue, uh, which is going to be like right. a, like a 10 page kind of prelude that leads into this run. Is that the idea? Yep. The, and that one's also drawn by, by Chris Burnham. Um, so it's the, you know, it gives you a peek of, of sort of where, um, of where we're going to pick up with, with these guys. But the, the main thing, the most, the most important part, uh, of that story for me was really kind of setting the tone. Like how is the tone of this new series going to be different? And, and I think you get that feeling right off the bat with the, with the 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 story we pluck you into, and and, and with what Chris is doing, um, you know, I've seen some of those pages, and they're absolutely perfect, absolutely exactly what I was trying, what I what I wanted it to look like. I think he's knocking it out of the park. So I think pick up that it's like a little mouche bouche, but it gives you an idea of this is what the full course is going to taste like. Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to that. Um... You mentioned that it's the 40th anniversary of the Turtles. Uh, obviously, you know, Turtle Mania kicked off uh, primarily in like the late 80s and then uh, you know, kind of took over in the beginning of the 90s. I was wondering, um, what was your role during Turtle Mania, like during the, the, the height of, of Turtles popularity? Like, 
did you uh, have a favorite movie? Did you uh, watch any of the shows? And uh, more importantly, of course, what was your favorite toy from that era? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I was definitely excited to, um, when they did the Usagi Yojimbo toy. Yeah. Um, that, was, that was a huge, I mean, t- to me really, again, just like reference in Usagi, it all goes back to the comics for me. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was, um, I, I watched the, the cartoon. I, I, saw the original movies in the theater as my you know comic book obligation i saw everything every comic book movie that came out but of course but turtles really for me was about the original mirage uh series like that was i was just kind of coming coming of age just sort of you know becoming a, a comic book fan in the 80s when you had turtles kind of leading that explosion of indie yeah. black and white books i was all over all that so i picked up the mirage book pretty early on and was sort of blown away by this nothing else on the stands that really looked like that book or felt like it you know it was it was quintessentially 80s right and i was yes. absolutely an 80s kid and then i loved um you know every every 80s action movie you can think of is on my is on my favorite movie list <laughs> um i loved the comics that that you know turtles was sort of springing from and referencing so I, everything it was a perfect storm for me and and then just the the rawness of the book the grittiness of the book um the, the stuck with me you know like through through everything i've been reading since then so that really my turtle fandom my my turtles reference point all goes back to that original series and i think with this volume i'm very much trying to bring some of that same grit and grunginess and rawness um, yeah. to the book while also you know, sprinkling in a little bit of the flavor of what the kind of stuff I usually do. Gotcha. I love the, um, yeah, the, the Eastman Laird run from uh, the first Mirage books is there's nothing like it. Uh, I, I just recently revisited the, uh, the first, I want to say 10 issues and like people's expectations, understanding, including my own were completely like turned on its ear. Cause when I was growing up, I had no access to those. Those were not, those were not in like reprints uh, right. back in the day. And so uh, I just had to like, I gl- like glimmers of what the, the original run was beginning a chance to actually sit down and like, look at like an oversized edition and look at like the pencil work and how apparently Laird and uh, Eastman like work together. There's no like way to know who actually drew what because they work right. in tandem on each page. And, uh, and, and I love those, uh, but, but seeing where it goes from like, okay, yeah, I get it. Turtles in the sewer fighting street crime issue three. We're in space. Like, <laughs> like we're dealing with dinosaur men. And it's like, this is, this is, this is not, a, this is not expected. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I love that. Uh, the comics are kind of like your, your, your reference point for the turtles and bringing it back. Um, you mentioned that uh, you were you wanted to put kind of your your flair on it. Um, one of the most recent uh, things of yours that I uh, had read that has now concluded, and I just wanted to take this opportunity to say, like your Punisher run was fire, dude, man, loved your Punisher book, thanks, uh, and uh, and did not see it going in the direction it did, um, but I guess I should have given uh, your your interest in kind of like this journey of a, of a, of a broken man and kind of going in that in, in a, in a kind of like, I don't want to say redemptive, but more of in a kind of, it lives up to its name. There's a punishment in that series that I was like, nice. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. I mean, I think to me, I think there's, there's both punishment and redemption in there at mm-hmm. the end, um, d- depending on how you want to look at it. Um, sure. Yeah. I, I am, I remain uh, deeply proud of that book. Um, again, it's, I think sort of like I'm talking about with taking over turtles at this point in time. Yeah. Like doing that Punisher book, which I, which I lobbied for pitched for, you know, that was, that was 120% my idea. Every single piece of it mm-hmm. felt like this is the perfect time to do this book. Right. Like to say, to make this, statement everything i wanted to say about about frank and the, yeah. and the punisher i put into that book the art teams came together perfectly so i'm really really proud of that entire package um you know you 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 know when those books kind of come along at the right moment in time and and the the talent involved all lines up perfectly and the you know the stars are all 
in the in the right position in the sky and that's definitely one of those you know the a lot of the thor stuff i did was like that turtles i think feels like it we're just at the beginning of it but feels yeah. like it's on that list as well and and it's also nice to go from you know like i've just been writing this huge story about the hand now i'm now i get to transition and write to the foot <laughs> <laughs> that's true uh it's funny the uh, the inspiration, of course, for Turtles comes from inspiration like Frank Miller, particularly on his Daredevil run. Um, is uh, is it? Did you, besides um, obviously being inspired by the Mirage run, um, did you go uh, to other sport sources of inspiration from Eastman and Laird? Uh, I'm thinking like Ronan and uh, you know like the the old uh, Daredevil run. Or, or did you seek to to kind of re inspire yourself through their lens, or did you kind of go, now this is the this is this is the Aaron show? No, I mean I don't I don't think I I, I didn't didn't you know pull out all my old Frank Miller books to to re-inspire myself but i mm -hmm. would say the the in particular the frank miller stuff you're talking about or even you know sin city and, and dark knight returns and the whole long list i think yeah. our stuff our, our books that um imprinted on me in you know like a, a, a foundational period of my life as a comic book fan is ultimately the guy who becomes a comic book writer mm -hmm. so i think those are some of the books that are always they're always there Right. Like I do revisit them from time to time, but also I don't need to remind myself that they exist. They are always there on the, on the, there's a very, you know, there's a, a select bookshelf in my head that I think influences pretty much everything I do in, in one way or another. Sometimes you'll see it more in one project than, than the next one, but it's always there. And I think Frank Miller's um, biggest books were definitely definite part of that and i again those were just like with that original turtles series um you know frank's stuff was one of the um creators who imprinted on me and made me a comic book fan in the first place yeah uh i wanted to uh talk about uh current books that you're working on right now because uh they're really exciting and uh they're demonstrably different from what had come before and what you'd been working on for the last couple of years, particularly Batman off world is a, a favorite of mine that I've been enjoying the heck out of. Thanks. thanks. Um, can you, you know, there's, I think there's some Frank in that too. There's, I feel that. Some... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it is so unexpected and yet it is so indicative of what I come to expect from your work, which is if Jason Aaron's on a book, it's going to, it's going to be different from what you, expect it's going to be different from what has good what has i appreciate before. that i, I mean um, i like i like hearing that so thank well, good you. Uh, but uh when you pitched it were you just like like how was the pitch process for off world were you like batman in space or were they kind of like i don't know man in space <laughs> <laughs> i mean that was that was kind of it i mean i you know I've, I've i've known ben abernathy and been friends with him for a long time uh, the only time we'd previously worked together was a Friday the 13th comic I did for <laughs> Wildstorm, you know, I don't know, 12 years ago, 15 years, long time ago. Mm -hmm. um, so we we just stayed in touch and, you know, he was the editor on Batman. So kind of once my ex ex Marvel exclusive was up, he was the first person I reached out to. I think I sent him that pitch, you know, for Batman Offworld the, the day after my exclusive. <laughs> expired yeah so i kind of always you know had it in my head for a new knew i wanted to, to do a batman thing for my first dc thing i kind of pretty quickly figured out you know i think i wanted to be this one um and i could have gone the you know the the more traditional street level grim and gritty kind of path and sure. i definitely think i've got one of those in me um but I liked the idea of, like you, like you said, doing something that hopefully feels um, consistent in some way with a, a lot of the, the big books I've done over the years and feels like it's by that, that same guy, but um, something that also seems surprising and, and different. And especially with Batman, where we've seen, you know, more Batman stories than pretty much anybody else. So yeah. how do you do something that feels like it's it's got a, you know something different to say or taking him to a different kind of challenge? So having him experience you know the, his first time going into space, first time facing all these different alien races, you know, plunking him into a world where he's 
uh, com completely a novice again and has no idea what he's doing. I could have thought that would be really fun. And then getting to work with, with Doug Monkey for the first time, also a huge joy. So it felt like, you know, this feels like the proper way to kind of make my debut as a yeah. DC writer. Is this really the first time you and you and Doug have worked together? Is is Batman all for Yeah, I mean he's always been in DC and I've always been at Marvel. So I guess that's fair. I yeah. Mean, I've, I've tried. I think I even back when I was first doing Wolverine stuff, you know, I was always trying to get Doug and like come on. I've, I think I've mentioned him for countless books over the years. Mm -hmm. It's uh the collaboration between the two of you is palpable. Like every scene you can tell like there's joy and fun and and delight in delivering some really harsh punishments to uh to both batman and his uh his captors um thanks want... which to me it's like the the job that's that's really my job right like right. you could look at it like my job is to entertain the readers but really all i can do is just write it i mean the thing i write is really only read and intended for one person that's whoever's drawing it right so if i'm writing a script and doug's excited to go draw it or you know, Joel and Cliff and Chris and Rafa, Hurdles, yeah. everybody I'm getting to work. Like my job is really to get them excited to go do what they do. Yeah. Um, if I do that, I feel like in some sense mission accomplished. Right. And <laughs> definitely still a lot to do. And you, you want to good pro put a good product out for people to find and enjoy, but it all starts with that, that part of the equation. And if you screw that up, then you, you know, you got nothing. Right, right. There's that great moment in the, I believe it's the first issue when he talks to, um, when he's talking yeah. to the Tamaranian about how, uh, where she says that, that that must be some some girl at home, like what's her name, and it just that that cut to Gotham City, where I was right. like, oh my god, <laughs> like realizing the turn where it's like, oh my god, this whole thing is about him just training to fight aliens in Gotham like that's it's such a funny moment right. where it's, it's it's like oh Bruce what are you doing <laughs> <laughs> this is you know this is a Batman who's at the point in his career where there's there's nobody back home except Alfred right like right there's no, there's no Robin yet there's no Nightwing there's no Bat family it's really just him Alfred and Gotham that's yeah. it and and um, so yeah, that's the, it's all about the links he will go to in order to protect um, his home turf. Yeah. Um, since you are working um, as a free agent, more or less, uh, with uh, both IDW and DC, um, uh, and and you have a a love uh, for uh, the indie comic scene, I was wondering, is there any? This is just just very much from a 90s kid uh any right. desire to revisit the or to visit rather the uh the wildstorm universe now that uh you know wildstorm's over there i mean you know never say never i mean i think i definitely pitched some wildstorm stuff back in again, back, back in the, the day yeah days. yeah <laughs> um i geez i'd have to like dig them out to even remember what they were <laughs> yeah um probably would want to start over then go with this but yeah 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 it's sure i mean i <laughs> i mean i think i mean i think in terms of the the books from the past that imprinted on me and stuck with me yeah i think probably more stuff i think i'm more an 80s guy than a 90s guy right on i mean certainly i was i never stopped reading comics right i'm i never Oh, I went to college and quit for a few years. That was never me. Like I've had a really? pull list. No blind spots for you. No, no zero blind spots in my collection. <laughs> <laughs> Cause I, um, I feel like that's a, that's a real, uh, that's a, that's a, a trait we kind of all share where we all have like, there's this one period where we were like, I wasn't reading. I couldn't afford them. I wasn't, uh, I wasn't interested sure. anymore, but no, you have a straight line from like when you were, yeah, when you were hooked. I mean, yeah, thankfully, you know, my, my mom spent a lot of money on those when I was a kid. <laughs> and then I did over the years. So I, I remember when I, you know, kind of first moving out on my own, uh, first, uh, when I first came to Kansas city, I'll say like I had so little stuff, I could pack it in my little geo Metro car and drive it to Kansas city. So <laughs> I, I had, you know, I didn't have forks. I didn't have a couch. Mm -hmm. But by God, I had a crap load of comic books, <laughs> <laughs> uninterrupted runs of countless different characters. So yeah, I never had that point when I when I um, drifted away. But I think '80s stuff imprinted on me in a bigger way um, than even the '90s. Um, yeah. But I was I was still buying all that stuff. So I, the 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 
again, like, like, good, like I said, the good thing about my career right now is I can take any phone call that, that comes my way. I am working for a lot of different comic book companies right now. Um, and most of them with kind of smaller commitments, turtles, you know, I, I mean, I'd, I'd said, you know, when I, when I stepped away from doing ongoing books at Marvel, I wasn't looking to jump into another big ongoing long-term commitment. Then I got the call for turtles and I was like, well, okay. Like, maybe <laughs> turns out I, I was just sort of waiting for the, the right offer. So, uh, but so I'm I'm spreading myself around to a lot of the companies and comics, and enjoying being able to do a lot of wildly different books. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, I was wondering, apropos of turtles, um, obviously everybody uh, has a favorite turtle. Uh, more specifically, I was wondering, do you have a favorite turtle villain? Oh, that's a good question. Nobody's asked me that. Everyone wants to ask me who my favorite turtle is which is a deeply I'm personal like, question i don't know if i want to cross that barrier with you it's like i don't think i have a favorite and even if i did i'm not going to tell anybody at this point <laughs> when i'm writing all of them exactly you don't want to show favoritism um i i in terms of a favorite villain i don't know that's a good question i, I don't the i mean maybe krang is an easy answer sure um but you know i i mean i the in, in terms of what we're doing in this new book i mean i again part of Part of, like I said, of of the spirit of going back to kind of that tone and grit of the the original black and white Mirage series is right. Um, we're not trying to reinvent the wheel in in some regards. So you're going to see turtles fighting ninjas. You know, you're going to see turtles fighting the Foot Clan. Awesome. Um, but there will still be things, um, situations, and characters involved in that who will be completely new. So. Mm. I, again, I think just like everything I I do, whether it's Thor or Punisher or whatever, it's like, how do you take what is tried and true about these characters, what people respond to, what I respond to, what I want to see in a in a book with these characters, but bring something that's that we haven't seen before, right? Put yeah. them in situations that they haven't faced before, uh, see how they respond. So I think it's a it's always got to be a good mix of old and new. Right. Um, do you have a favorite turtle video game? Oh man, I, I got, I got nothing on that one. Like really, a, you didn't play the no. arcade back in the day or, uh, the Nintendo yeah. game. The, you know, I was never a huge, uh, video game guy. I didn't, I never had a Nintendo. I was like a Sega Genesis guy. Oh, wow. Well, there you go. Um, yeah. So I was played a lot of, you know, Sonic, Sonic. and Shinobi. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, so I, I can't I can't help you on that one. That's fair. No, because it's uh with the with the rise of um, you know, you can arcade cabinets used to be these dinosaurs. They still are, but like back right. when they were invented, there was big friggin' honking machines made of wood. And uh, nowadays, you can fit a thousand of those games on like a disc, you know, the size of your oh, right. thumbnail. Yes, because, yeah, like all the arcades in the world fit on one little. Right. Yeah, you can fit, you can play them Hard on your drive. own phone, and right. so now they're selling these like smaller arcades, uh, you know, little like recreations of the arcade cabinets. So like for collectors or for old school fans, like I, a couple of us have uh, you know the old Turtles arcade game in our house, and so we can oh, kind of like revisit awesome. if we want to. And I was curious if you uh, if you had if you spent any of your summers like you know just putting quarters on the thing. And, no, but I'll come over to your house whenever you definitely. Don't, like when do you want me to come by, and I'll come. Okay, yeah, I think uh, we'll have to have like a, a, a rage or some summer. We'll have you and Chip Zdarsky and a couple other creators just come on by and play video games and just beat up the turtles. It'd be great. So um, you just invited me and Chip Zdarsky to your house. Like, I don't think you realize, realize yeah. what you've just done. <laughs> well, that's the thing is I like to see matchups that I've never seen before. Um, so so what's the matchup? Me versus Chip? Is that I think the... it's got to be, right? I mean, you know, well, I only mentioned that because Chip actually did make a, he was on the show recently and he was like, well, I'm going to come over and we're going to talk about that. So I'm like, oh, well, Chip actually put an open invitation out there. You two are the only ones who've ever right. actually offered. So, yeah. Um, cool. But we'll yeah, man, um, I am really hyped. Uh, Turtles, uh, the relaunch is coming in July. The prelude for the alpha issue is in June. Um, so we still have to wait uh, quite a bit. Is there any uh, teas that you are uh, legally allowed to share that <laughs> might whet people's appetites about what's coming from you and Turtles? Well, I I think we can say that um, you know again, like I've like I've talked about, it's that that original series is important to me. Kind of getting back to some of the flavor and grit of that. 
as part of that, I think we can say that this opening storyline is called Return to New York. Oh, um, okay. You know, which should which should ring ring a bell for some old original Turtles fans. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, awesome. I think we can give that away. If not, you know, then I'm sure we'll we'll find out quickly. Yeah, <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> Jason, thank you so much for being here. Uh, should uh, is is there any official website people or a Substack people can go to to check out more Jason Aaron goodness? Yeah, I got a Substack newsletter. It's probably the easiest way to keep up with all the all the new books I've got coming Definitely. out. There'll be and there'll be there'll be more being announced soon too. I've got a, you know some other surprising announcements coming up. So if you just look for Jason Aaron on Substack, you'll find me. Will do. I love the fact that uh, you, you, that, that tease is amazing because. When I heard that Jason Aaron was doing Ninja Turtles, I was like, oh, my God, like, <laughs> like, what a great idea and something I never really would have like crossed the lines to get. So I'm really here. I'm, I'm hyped to hear that you're like, oh, well, there's some surprises. I'm like, well, I've already been surprised. So I'm looking forward to seeing Good. what that might mean. Uh, Thanks. That's, that's the same way I feel in every every new thing I'm working on. So. Good. That's great, man. Uh, it keeps you uh, it keeps you keeps you sharp, makes you want to keep doing more and uh you know not uh not not get burned out of this industry because it's uh it's a tough one i know uh but the, folks thank you so much for being here thanks to jason for being here and of course check out ninja turtles coming out the alpha issue in june and uh, the relaunch begins in july so check out jason's Substack, and we'll see you guys next time here at comp Pop returns so long everybody <laughs>